Most of them have an enormously romantic idea of Paris, of course, as so many of us do. Young men and their wives flock to Paris, fresh from the battlefield and trying to figure out how to put their lives back together again. And the government has given them money to do so. In 1948, Congress and the Senate passed a bill to give GIs benefits in terms of education and housing. This show chronicles the lore of Paris. Paris was an incredible education, of course, not just in terms of the academies and the art schools that they were enrolled in, but of course the museums. And they were going and looking at art and they were looking at Manet and Monet. For some of them, it's a romantic place. Go to a Paris in which they're going to see the artworks that they cut their teeth on, but have actually never seen, or they've never seen them in color. Almost all the reproduction before the war is black and white. They assimilated this beautiful, light, open, impressionist sensibility, the delicacy of touch and beauty of color that is quite different from that generation and will eventually become very, very American. Uh, but in this exhibition, we see that the roots are in fact quite French. We've got a mythic Paris, Woody Allen Paris, right? Which was the one that drew American artists the first time around in the teens and the 20s, jazz clubs, cafe society, the French avant-garde. Contrast that with the Paris that the American GIs arrive in at the center of an incredible amount of political, social, and cultural change. While there's a jazz scene, it's a very different jazz scene. It's not hot jazz, it's sort of existential, so it's not the big band stuff, it's the soloist. You've got this incredible backdrop for these Americans who are also back home experiencing the triumph of American painting, the moment in which America produces the first really important visual art that it would. Rather than stay in New York, they take their GI Bill money and they head for Paris for that experience.